Hi folks, it's Perry again. I wanted to discuss engineering. This part I'm holding in my hand is the bearing thrust block for the Y-axis ball screw on my Fidal uh, CNC mill. Uh, this block is what transmits all of the thrust force of the ball screw into the casting of the machine. This block is uh, made of aluminum. It's about one inch thick and it has a pocket for a bearing. Uh, there is a corresponding uh, bearing that bolts on uh, to here uh, that's in another piece I'll show you later. Uh, the point of this is, is that uh, this block is expected to transmit all of the torque, all of the thrust at or, you know, generated by the ball screw, which can be quite significant. Now, looking at this, uh, I noticed some alarming things, and if I can get the camera to focus here. Okay, so this shoulder right here that you see, or this step, this counterbore, uh, it's there to retain the, uh, the collapsible spring bellows, and it looks like it's an afterthought. Because when you look a little closer here, you see this little tiny step? This little tiny shoulder uh, in the material is what holds the seal for the ball screw to keep grime out of the thrust bearings. And it also is the shoulder that retains the thrust bearing. Now we've got a problem here. I don't know if I can get zoomed in enough here. Um, down in the bottom of this little shoulder right here, uh, let me, down in the bottom of that shoulder, there's a crack. And this is a design failure. And the first thing that led me to notice that is that whenever I took this apart, this surface right here was sort of ballooned out and the thrust bearings came out really easily. There was no preload whatsoever on the thrust bearings. You know, we'll talk about that in a moment, but there's a bearing that goes in here and then there's another bearing. Let me show you. There's a bearing that goes in that bore and then there's this bearing. And these two bearings have a little tiny shim that goes between them. And let me see. Yeah, see? There's a, a little tiny shim that's probably two thousandths that goes between them. And that shim creates a preload condition between the inner and the outer race. And in order to maintain that preload, the two outer bearing shells need to be clamped together, and the two inner bearing races need to be clamped together. So what you're doing is you're actually creating an interference of about two thousandths, which preloads the balls against the race. If you don't keep the outer bearing shells clamped toward, you know, clamped together, you'll lose that preload and the bearing will become loose, which is what I found. Um, now, what I think happened is this little tiny shoulder right here, which I already know is cracked and broken, I think that over the years what's happened is that all of that thrust that comes from the ball screw uh, ends up hammering out this little tiny shoulder. So I did a little bit of math to try to figure out how thick or, or you know, why that's breaking. I mean, it seems obvious to me that this should be thicker since the corresponding shoulder on uh, the other uh, ball screw mounts is the same uh, thickness as the depth of the seal. So we have this seal here, and that seal goes in there, and this shoulder should be the same depth of that seal, which is about a quarter of an inch. And on the uh, on this block right here, you can see that seal sits almost flush, so that's almost a quarter of an inch there. Uh, so let's go to, uh, to the whiteboard. I did some math here. Let me uh, get up on the tripod so that uh, I'm not handshaking the whole thing. So let me get a pointer. You like my little swarf pointer here. And so what we have here is we have uh, there's four bolts that hold 
the bearing retainer to the back of the plate. Those bolts are 5 16 18 bolts. Now I looked it up and 5 16 18 grade 5 bolts should be torqued to 17 foot pounds. And when torqued dry at 17 foot pounds, you'll get 3,340 pounds of clamping force. Now if you multiply that 3,340 pounds of clamping force by the four bolts, you get 13,360 pounds. That seems like a lot, and it actually is. Now, the bearing that goes behind, that goes in the uh, the block, is 52 millimeters in diameter, and I already did all the unit conversions. It works out to 3.291 square inches of bore. Now, if you take that 13,360 pounds and you distribute it over that bore area, you get 4,058 uh, 4, pounds per square inch. Now this block is made presumably from 6061 aluminum, which has a minimum strength of 42,000 PSI. Now that little tiny shoulder that retains the bearing is only an eighth inch thick. So we derate the 42,000 PSI by an eighth of an inch and we get that little shoulder is equivalent to 5,250 PSI. That's what its strength is. So when you take that 5250 and you divide it by the force applied, you'll see that it's only 77.2% or a safety factor of 22.8%. Now, this all assumes that you only apply 17 foot-pounds of torque. Now, I'm not a little guy, and even with this tiny little wrench right here, I can apply somewhere in the neighborhood of 29 foot-pounds of torque. So, I didn't look it up, but if you double that torque, it's very likely that you're going to get in excess of 120% of the yield strength of that material, which is why the shoulder failed. So, engineering, failure, and I have a solution for it. I have a bunch of these aluminum discs. Uh, not going to use this particular aluminum disc because I don't like the composition of the aluminum. Uh, this is actually from the Ukraine, and I remember machining this stuff. It was pretty terrible. There's already some corrosion on the other side of it. Um, I've got some good Kaiser 5 8 aluminum. What I'm going to do to fix this is I'm going to bore this out all the way. I'm going to bore this shoulder completely out, and then I'm going to sandwich another piece of material on it with a bolt circle that's larger and offset from the existing bolt circle. So this ends up becoming the bearing retainer. It'll have a counterbore in there to retain the seal, and then it'll have a larger counterbore to offer a shoulder, a step for the bellows to sit in. And that will fix this particular problem uh, for the life of the machine. So I hope that this uh, was uh, you know, interesting and you learned something. Uh, you know, it's a practical application of engineering principles. This failed, and I expect that uh, this was probably superseded by a better design part, but it's clear that the bellows were an afterthought in the original design, and they ended up taking away material for this shoulder bearing, or the shoulder support for the bearing, and that resulted in failure. So whenever I clamp this on, I'll be using 3 8 bolts to ensure that the fixed end will actually have more clamping torque than the 4 5 16 18 bolts. And that way I can torque these down uh, nice and snug to maintain that preload and ensure that the bearings are retained for the life of the machine after I put it back together. So thanks for watching. Uh, like I said, I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, if you have any questions, just let me know. Bye.